on the heels of the Xbox Series X teraflops being released. It's being rumored that the PlayStation 5 teraflops might actually be higher. With all this teraflop bibblewop talk, is this gonna really determine the winner next gen? Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. I know it's been a while. We're doing other formats, but you know, hey, the same game of a different name is all the same. Say that fast five times. <laughs> with that being said, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping them doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because y'all know the deal. I am not too proud to ask. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so it's kind of like a rant. I really didn't prepare or do any research, because this is in a realm that I care about, um, but I don't put as much emphasis on it as a lot of people have as of late, and, and I'm gonna explain why. So I'm, I'm, I'm really winging this one. I'm one take Mars, but bear with me, y'all. I'm really winging this one. So here, here's the deal, y'all. Um, so Xbox Series X was revealed at the Game Awards December 2019, as we all know by now. After that reveal, a lot of information has been released that it was it's four times more powerful than the S, the Xbox One S. It's twice as powerful as the X. And people have speculated and it has been confirmed that the Xbox One uh, or the Xbox Series X, excuse me, is hovering around 12 plus teraflops. The actual number, I don't know, all right? On the heels of that, there have now been rumors within places like NeoGAF or whatever, or Reset Era, wherever these rumors are coming from, that the PlayStation 5 now might be 13.1 teraflops with the sock and the unit chips and the, the bibblewats and the gigahertz, right? So here, here's the thing, man. Let's let's keep it real. Let's keep it short and sweet and real. Will it matter? And the answer is no. Okay. I I get that there's a lot of nerds that care about this crap. So therefore they want to share these statistics and the circuitry boards and the and the bibble watts. And I get it. That's fine. I'm a nerd on various things too. And this just doesn't interest me in, as it relates to gaming. It's something that if I really cared about, I could sit down. Give me a couple days, I can figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 not the smartest person in the world, but I ain't a complete dummy, I don't think. You know what I'm saying? So it's just something that doesn't interest me. Stuff that interests me, I stay up all night and, and, and I figure it out and I do my due diligence. And this is one that doesn't interest me. Why? Because who's gonna win the generation is gonna be dependent upon three things as it comes to visual output and, and how things look and are perceived by the end user, okay? And the giggle spots and the bibble woods, it's not gonna do it. It's just not going to do it. Here are the three things that are gonna factor in for the winner of the next generation as it relates to how game fidelity and how games look and how games are perceived by your average consumer. All right, first thing is, the, the, the best looking games will be dependent upon the talent, okay? We've said this a thousand times over. You know what I'm saying? We had so much power under the hood of the Xbox One X, right? And we know what the Xbox games look like, and we know what the PlayStation games look like. And we've said this ad nauseum. We had a game, God of War, that looked better on a $200 box than anything that was released on the $500 box at launch or in the launch period, you know what I'm saying? Within that release within that time frame, And it really put a hurting on the perception of that box and, and the necessity of it, especially when that box, the most powerful console was $500, okay? So at the end of the day, it comes to your development talent. Do they have the talent there that can whip out these visuals consistently across the board? I get it that Hellblade 2 look good. Ninja Theory has skills. Does everybody have skills to pump that power out 
You know what I'm saying? Especially if the PlayStation 5 does end up with less teraflops, right? Okay. Secondly, they will look and perform best depending upon the deals that have been made. I don't get why we have such short-term memory. Do we forget parody things such as what happened with Destiny 2 at launch? You know, be per deals with PlayStation and greedy, grimy Activision, where it was so bad it was rumored. Remember, don't forget, it was rumored that Destiny 2 could perform at 60 frames per second, and there could have been a 60 frames per second mode on the Xbox despite the bottleneck of the CPU. But that didn't happen because there was no way to do so on the Pro. And Activision had an exclusive big time deal with PlayStation for marketing rights. And Destiny 2 ain't the only one. There's been several other games uh, that has been dependent upon these parody clauses or just the simple, the sheer fact of what we was calling lazy development. You know what I'm saying? And I, it, it, maybe that wasn't fair. Maybe to, to catalog it as lazy development, maybe that wasn't fair because it's just simple business. It doesn't matter if you give these devs a lot of, a big open sandbox to play with. They are encumbrancing of the publishers. They are at the, they're at the beck and will of the publishers. So if the publisher says, uh-uh, stop playing with that thing. We sell more units on this thing then it don't matter the power under the hood. So deals, like it or not, deals are gonna, are gonna be a, more of a deciding factor than teraflops alone, opposed to who gets what and what looks better on what architecture and system or platform, all right? Lastly, lastly, okay? And I've been saying this in my last few videos. The biggest impact on Mindshare is gonna be dependent upon the messenger. I mean, think about it. Like marketing is key. There's a, there's a reason why people do this. And I'm telling you, in my industry, which is heavily dependent upon marketing, psychology is a key component in that. People take what we call modules, where they're studying every month, every week, the psychology of the demographic that they're selling their product and services to, all right? so. If they understand the psychology and they understand the habits of us, the consumers, better than we do sometimes because we're not really thinking about it, we're just being impulsive. If they can pin down our impulses better than we can, right? With slogans like 1080p make you a better gamer or 1080-60 make you a better gamer rather, then none of that stuff under the hood is gonna matter. Because you can talk about the teraflops and the gigawatts or whatever, but if your messaging has been porous, like Xbox messaging has been all generation, and them being dependent on Digital Foundry, the last people I wanna be dependent upon, because they haven't really done you any favors. You know what I'm saying? One minute they're liking your, your product, the next minute you, you release Hellblade that catches all of the gaming community at all, and then they come on, uh, uh, their YouTube channel and dog it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? With, with friends like that, who needs enemies? So messaging, parsing all that down because people don't know what teraflops is or do, they don't even know if that even matters. They don't know if that's the weight of the console or what. Parsing all that down and making that make sense to the average consumer is all dependent upon who? The messenger, all right? So having these teraflop discussions and all this other stuff, and I'm seeing a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, and it's making me sick to my stomach. I'm gonna be honest with you. Because again, I keep using this, this, this example, and I'm gonna keep using that nauseum. I, it feels like 50 first dates. Who cares? All that power stuff alone did nothing for Xbox. And I'm not just targeting Xbox. I'm talking about my Xbox community place. It doesn't matter. This is not, this alone is not going to be a deciding factor of who wins anything. Okay. Again, let's go over it again for short term, short term memory. It all depends upon your development talent. It all depends upon the deals that are struck and it all depends upon the messaging. Okay. Having this as part of that whole buffet of, of presentation, the teraflop discussion, the ter teraflop talk. It's great, but it has to come as a collage or just gonna look like a blurry mess instead of a masterpiece.
And that's it from your boy MM2K. Let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always tell you, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check me out on the links below to follow me. And hey, yo, I'm on the Broadband Bullies Network. I'm on the PNTS Network. I'm on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Network. And lastly, I am with the Stadia Dosage Network. Check me in all those places, all right? And with that being said, Look, nerds, y'all can have the teraflop talk, but understand that this should not be the tell-all be-all. You know what I'm saying? Don't have the Drew Barrymore short-term memory of 51st dates. And with that being said, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.